Vertex shaders. Turning a box into a sphere. Working in 3D means we need to change our camera from an orthographic camera to a perspective camera. A 3GS perspective camera takes four parameters. Take a look at GLSL shaders 44 at this address. You should see a wireframe box in the center of screen. Now study the code at line 25. The first parameter when creating a perspective camera is the field of view in degrees. Here the camera has a field of view, an FOV of 45 degrees. The second parameter is the aspect ratio of the screen. That's the width divided by the height. Parameter 3 is the near value and parameter 4 is the far value. These are in world coordinates. If an object is nearer than one unit to the camera, it will be clipped, and further than a thousand, it will also be clipped. We position the camera at Z equals 100, and we're looking down the negative Z axis towards the point 000, by default. At line 39, we create the geometry for a box. You can define a box with three parameters, the width, height and depth but you can also use six parameters, like we're doing here. Parameters four to six are the number of segments in the X, Y and Z directions. Here, all are set to 10. Each side of the box will have 100 quads, a four-sided polygon, or 200 triangles, since each quad must be divided into triangles and a quad is made from two triangles. To see what is happening, I've set the wireframe property of the shader to true. The shader is only called for edges of the shape this way. With this example, if you click and drag in the screen, you can rotate the view. This is handled by the useful control, 3.orbit controls. To create a control like that, simply create a new 3.orbit controls, passing the camera object and the renderer DOM element. In this example, that is handled by the code at line 61. Notice at line 44 that we add a uniform that is the radius. The aim of our shader will be to mix between placing the vertex at a point that is radius length from the center and the model position of the vertex. Just to be clear, we now have a box. We're displaying this in wireframe and by dragging with the mouse, we can rotate this around in 3D. Interesting, but so far it doesn't need a custom shader. Let's have some fun. Slide up to the vertex shader code and enter float delta equals sine u time plus 1 divided by 2.0. This should be very familiar. We're using the u time uniform and the sine function to return a value between 0 and 1. Now enter vec3v equals normalized position times u radius, vec3 pos equals mix position v delta. Your box blends into a sphere and back to a box in a looping cycle. Let's look at how this is achieved. Remember that a vertex shader is principally there to set the position of a vertex. It does this by applying the model view matrix and the projection matrix to a homogeneous coordinate, a coordinate that has an additional fourth parameter, usually set to one. This is so four by four matrices can be applied and positional changes will occur under matrix multiplication. But let's not over worry that. The important thing is we need to set the GL position property. If we simply use the modeled position for this, then we get a box that we can rotate using the orbit controls object. How would we take the model position and place this at the outside of a sphere of radius specified by the uniform U radius? First, we take the current position and treat this as a vector. We normalize it. That is, we set it to a vector of length one. Imagine a vector extending from the origin to the position. This is converted to length one and then multiplied by the U radius property. Now it is on the surface of a sphere of radius U radius. 
Then we use a delta value that uses time and the sine function to create a variable that moves smoothly between 0 and 1. We use this value to mix between the position, the model location of the vertex, and the calculated position, v. That is where a vertex that is projected onto a sphere of radius u radius would be. The result is a breathing box. Try reducing the range of movement so it never goes more than a quarter away to be in a sphere. Pause the video now and give it a try. Easy one. Just divide delta by 4.0. If this seems a little slow, then multiply the u time value at line 8 by a factor. Before we go too far into vertex shaders, it would be nice to add some lighting. 3D benefits usually from lighting, and the 3GS library includes lots of light types. This video is taken from the course Learn GLSL Shaders from Scratch. A link to the complete course is in the description below.